Father Andre uh, Mahana, thanks so much for being with us. You know, uh, you are the national uh, president of the Association of the Clergy, uh, which was created by the Vatican. You have been educated uh, and you've studied the priesthood in, in, in France, in Rome, in Lebanon, the country where you're from, my ethnic background as well. Uh, but I'm sure that you've seen, as I've seen, uh, in a 10-year period between 2005 and 2015, more than a million Christians slaughtered because they are Christians in the Middle East and Africa. What is happening? What's happening is a global genocide against Christianity, which is today is the world's largest persecuted religion in the world to judge. Why? But why? Why is it happening? Who's allowing it to happen? Well, we have four reasons for this to happen in the world. First of all, it's been happening for 200 years in a great silence in the world. One of which I think the West secularism is one main reason after the French Revolution. And I think this is a historical um, reason behind this. And after that, you had the Turkish Empire, First World War, basically, when you had million and a half Armenians, you had the genocide against the Syriac people inside Turkey and Lebanon and Syria um, in other areas in the Middle East. Then you had the, the wave of the uh, Arab states beginning um, in their creation after Sykes-Picot. The world was in so much transformation and changes. Then you had Europe, United States, uh, South Asia, Far Asia between the two great wars in the 20th century. But I think the main reason for this silence has to do with secularism, radical Islam in the world, unfortunately, and um, the trend in the West that they think persecuting Christians is a simple reason because of a religious ignorance. But because why isn't unless the United States it, getting involved? Isn't the United States supposed to be, you know, the, the country that, that protects people and liberties? And, you know, we're welcoming all these refugees. What about Christian refugees? Are they coming into this country equally? They're not coming. They're not allowed to come into the country, at least under the former administration. Obama. We see hope with the new administration. Yes, ma'am. We see hope with the new administration, with our president. And this is why I was inclined when I was doing prayers in his rally that he understood that message and he wanted to make sure America becomes one of the promoters and protectors for Christians in the world. I am praying that he will continue and achieving his promises in this regard. In my short and few meetings, brief meetings with the president and part of his teams and many religious leaders in the U.S., that's what I do with Our Lady of Fatima statue, the one I told you about. I blessed the right. president with it and I blessed also, I prayed with Pope Francis with that same statue. Spiritual diplomacy should be added as one of the platforms in the 21st century to make America I a leader in the world to maintain the justice. Uh, Father, with all due respect, I don't know what spiritual diplomacy means. We pray for them to stop at some point, don't I tell we? You, we have, yes. I tell you what spiritual diplomacy what it? means. It means simply say the truth, break the silence about the persecution against Christians. Mm -hmm. Make sure the world know that Christianity is light in this world and it must be kept. And don't let oil, don't let money, don't let any other values in humanity or interest or political intrigues challenge you. That's what I call spiritual diplomacy. It's okay for a president to stand and say, I am a believer, I am a Christian, I am a pro-life, I want to stop abortion, I want to stop physician-assisted suicide, I want to stop the murder of Christians in the world. I want to allow that faith to flourish because it is important for it to flourish as Father, the only faith that calls for the love of the enemy. Is the Pope doing enough? Is the Pope doing enough? The Pope, uh, my information says, is being informed. Definitely he's accompanying and he's following up. Doing enough, I think he can do more. To be honest with you, the Pope can do more on the platform of protecting Christians in the world and in the Middle East. But I do believe he is very sincere at heart to try to understand well, well, and to try to do Well, he's the leader of the flock. Enough. He should be at the head of the spear. And finally, because we're running out of time, Father, what would you like my viewers to do? Besides the spiritual diplomacy, speaking up, what can they do for Christians in the Middle East? 
I want them to go tell, save the persecuted the Christians in the world. Go check uh, St. Rafka, missionofhopeandmercy.org, missionofhopeandmercy.org. It tells you the clear action you need to take in today's world. Conserve your virtue. Celebrate Easter as we come this to a vigil of Easter. Make sure you stand up for your values, for your traditional values as an American, and tell the story of the Christians. The Middle East is a place of dialogue, love, coexistence and peace and we need to keep Christianity as a light in this world to judge. All right, Father Mahana from Colorado, thank you so much for being with us and happy Easter to you, Father. Happy Easter to you. God bless you. Thank you, Father.